Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Very nice. Such a nice greeting. Early in the morning. Pardon me, I'm still in my uh, t-shirt here because we're getting ready to go to a funeral mass and I haven't quite dressed up. Yeah. And we're late today. On purpose. We decided to uh, sleep in a little bit because we've been having plenty of late nights. So... That's why it's already 8.30. We just got done with breakfast, but the show must go on. We have the commentary of the gospel by Dad. Okay, today we're going to read from the gospel of St. Luke, chapter 6, verses 39 to 42. So, uh, if you recall the past days, we have been reading from St. Luke, where our Lord gives us some very clear cut um, um, instructions. There are practically instructions of how we uh, can live charity, how we should deal with our neighbors, right? And how we should conduct our lives um, as, as Christians. And today, we continue with that. And uh, and um, this is again another very interesting um, gospel where our Lord makes use of some very, very concrete images to, to uh, teach us some very practical lessons. Okay? So today we're going to hear about uh, a blind person. We're going to hear about uh, the beam in the eye. Right? Um, so... Let's read it. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide another blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher. But when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye? But do not perceive the wooden beam in your own. How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye, when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye? You hypocrite! Remove the wooden beam from your own eye first, and then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eyes. It is so easy to see the mistakes of others, right? That's what our Lord is saying here. It is so easy for us to notice how other people do wrong. Yet, we are so oblivious about our own mistakes. We are, all, we are, we are very oblivious about our own shortcomings. So what does our Lord call that tendency? He calls that hypocrisy so he tells you you hypocrites remove that beam in your own eye first in other words learn to deal with your own problems first right before you even try to do anything about your own brother's mistakes that beam in the eye is a metaphor for the blindness that our Lord talks about in the first part of this gospel. Can a blind man lead another blind man? Definitely not, right? Both will fall into a pit. So it is hypocrisy, it is blindness that we exhibit when we mind other people's mistakes, but we couldn't care less about our own shortcomings. So there's something off there. There's something not right. <clears throat> but maybe the question to ask is, what causes that blindness? What causes that blindness? What causes the buildup of that sty? That's not only a sty anymore. It becomes a beam <laughs> in the eye that, that covers your eyes like scales do. Uh, cover the eyes of a blind man. Right? What causes that? How's that? Sin, very good, Chevelle. Sin, and particularly what sin? You don't know, <laughs> huh? 
the sin of pride. Of course, pride accompanies every sin, right? Because every sin is a disobedience to God's law. And every time you disobey God's law, you are manifesting pride. Because pride is the root of all evil. Hey, pride is the root of all evil. Pride is the cause of many of our defects and deficiencies. And it is also pride, primarily, that prevents us from seeing our own mistakes, of understanding ourselves, of knowing ourselves. Uh, hey? uh, yes, Eva, do you agree? Huh? <laughs> okay. So, and that pride leads to other things. It leads to being so self-centered. Okay. It leads to being self-centered. It leads us to um, focus too much on ourselves. Not in the right way though. The way we focus on ourselves if we are too proud would be to only, to only uh, 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 project our own vanity. To only mind how we look. To mind our reputation. Mind how other people think about us. But all of those are, are, are false impressions. Because until and unless we know and recognize our own sins and our own shortcomings, our own defects, then we really do not know ourselves. We really do not know ourselves. So pride, self-centeredness, which leads to selfishness, which leads to insincerity, actually, lack of transparency, and even cowardice. Cowardice. People who don't know themselves enough to understand what's wrong with them are actually cowards. The reason why they could not penetrate themselves, the reason why they cannot even uh, ask their conscience and, 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 and go deep inside their conscience to evaluate the wrong things they're doing is because they're cowards. They're afraid to confront the truth about themselves. And pride... Uh, uh, makes us do that. Pride actually makes us cowards. The pride that we feel in ourselves is actually a, a facade, is actually a front that we put up in order to cover up our own mistakes, to cover up our own shortcomings. And that is the beam. You see, it becomes bigger and bigger. It's not only just a spy, it's not only just a speck in the eye, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger to the point that it's like a beam that really blinds you and makes you unable to know yourself. Eh? And because you don't know yourself, well, you're in big trouble. You're in big trouble because you will not see anything beyond yourself. You won't even see God. So how do we combat this? How do we overcome this? What can we do? In order to uh, remove that beam in our eye. <clears throat> what can we do? What's the cure for this? The antidote to this is a thorough and sincere examination of conscience. It is the effort to sincerely, humbly... Talk to God about ourselves and examine our conscience and ask God to enlighten us to realize what's wrong with us, to realize our sins, to realize our shortcomings, to realize our cowardice in confronting our own mistakes, our own sins, our own shortcomings. We have to do examination of conscience we have to get into the habit of doing a sincere examination of conscience with humility with humility it takes humility to counteract that pride it takes humility to ask ourselves what's wrong with us to ask ourselves <laughs> Ava to ask ourselves the hard questions the hard questions about what's wrong with us and how we can improve ourselves and 
for folks of you out, out there, I would recommend that this examination of conscience be done daily. Here in our own household, this is how we end the day. This is how we go to bed before we go to bed. At the end of our day, we devote about 10 minutes where we all sit together in the, in the family room and we all do our examination of conscience. And I, I facilitate that by asking questions to, uh, in that, during that 10 minute session where we examine what happened during the day and we think about how we approximated those demands of our Christian life during the day. Um, for example, um, in, this, in this period, what are the questions we ask ourselves in the examination of conscience? So the first question we ask nowadays is, how did I love today? That's the first question. We try to ask ourselves in front of our Lord, how did I show love today? Love for God, love for neighbor, love for my brothers and sisters, love for my family, love for other people that we encountered today. How did I love today? And we devote a good minute or two to just run through the day and examine that day. How did I love today? Using that question, that prompt, right? It's like a prompt to examine ourselves in that particular point. How did I love today? Then after about a minute, we ask the second question. How did I care today? Did I go out of my way to care for others? Which is, of course, an offshoot of loving, right? But in this case, something more concrete. How did I care today? Even about, you know, the material things of the day. Not necessarily always going out to, uh, to uh, minister to others. Eva, <laughs> But caring about the little things. How did I care today? Then the third question is, how did I serve today? That's the third question. How did I serve today? How did I actually forget myself today and become a servant to others? Primarily to the people at home, my own siblings. How did I serve them? How did I attend to their needs? How did I do that today? What are we all distracted about? Who's there? Hmm? Mm, okay. Then what's the next question? I got distracted already. How did we serve today? And then how did we? Excel. How did we excel today? Okay. How did we go out of our way to do our, be our best and to do our best in the things that we needed to do today? From schoolwork to our chores to... Uh, Every little thing, <laughs> Eva, every little thing that we did today. How did we excel? And did we do things only for the glory of God? Right? Did we excel in everything we did today in order to give glory to God? And then the last question is, how can we improve? What can we do better tomorrow? What can we do better tomorrow? So this, this is how our examination of conscience goes every night. Okay? And after about 10 minutes of doing that, then we all hit the sack, go to bed, and, well, say our evening prayers before we hit the sack. And that concludes our day. Ah! Now, this is a very good habit. Hey, this girl is smiling now. Come on, come on, come on. Let's talk to them here. Come here. You tell them what you are concerned about today, Ava. There we go. Okay. So... That is how we do the examination of conscience every day, every night. And I would recommend that, you know, we do that every night because that is going to help us understand ourselves. It's going to help us um, uh, realize our shortcomings and our, our, our sins that can help us later to go and do a very sincere confession. So examination of conscience and confession a sincere confession done frequently, as frequently as possible, are the antidotes to pride and to blindness over our own mistakes and our own sins. Okay, and Ava agrees. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Have a good day, everybody. 
and I hope you all have a good day. Today is the uh, the funeral mass and the burial of uh, Orlando um, uh, Cardona, um, a family friend of our, a friend of ours, a relative also. So let us all pray for Orlando today. Those among you who are listening, uh, let's pray for the repose of his soul. Okay. We're going off today to uh, do the last rites, uh, mass for him in the uh, burial. Okay, say goodbye now. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.